So, I was watching Destin Sandlin's video, aka Smarter Every Day's video that he put out today, on the AIM-9 Sidewinder, and a particular feature that he spotted on there called Rollerons. And Rollerons are very, very clever. But he brought up an excellent question while he was looking at them, which is, why is it that they don't just have a simple hinge that goes, you know, like this on the fin, and instead have some weird hinge, internal, internally cut 45 degree hinge like that? Um, and I remember a long time ago, I actually saw the answer to this somewhere else. Uh, and also the correct answer was stated in the comments section, which is that uh, a simple hinge like this will stabilize the missile in roll, but these weird 45 degree hinges will stabilize it in pitch and yaw as well. Uh, and the very earliest versions actually only have the uh, 90 degree hinge to stabilize in roll. Uh, and so he he says the uh, uh, at the start, he says the correct thing, which is they're based on gyroscopic precession. Then later, he misstates it, where he says that the rollerons will resist the roll of the missile and keep pointing in the same direction. And that's actually not how they work. It's actually kind of weird, where what they do is they have to actually lean into the way the missile is rolling to stop it. Right, so if this is the uh, missile, so imagine it's headed straight towards you. <laughs> uh, I guess maybe I should make it headed towards me, but it's easier to visualize this way. So imagine that it starts to, you know, starts to maybe, or sorry, other way. Let's imagine that it starts to maybe roll this way. So, you know, if the, maybe the, the center of the missile is down here, uh, my, where my elbow is, and then this fin is up here, and the missile starts to roll like that. Well, what do you need the missile? What do you need the fin to do to stabilize the missile? Well, you need it to go like that. You need it to go like that and actually push backwards, and so that actually requires that you have it real leaning into the turn, right? Because if it starts to go like this, you need it to go like that so that it goes back. And so, how do you get it to do that, right? Because if it was just a question of you know you know, there's some gyroscope mounted on here, and, you know, it doesn't move when this moves. Well, you know, you move it like this, and it tries to stay in the same orientation, it's actually going to exacerbate the problem, and now you have airflow pushing against this, and it's actually going to make the problem worse. What you need it to do is lean into the turn so that it pushes back and stabilizes everything. So how do you get it to do that? Well, you get it to do that using something called gyroscopic precession you may have heard of. And you may have seen the demo I'm about to do, where you take a bicycle wheel and carefully start spinning it. And then notice how I have this string attached, to, oh, a little unstable here. Notice how I have this str string attached to one side. And what I'm gonna use that for is so that I can let go of the side I'm holding with my hand. And notice that rather than drop, the wheel rotates around this way I mean, it's already spinning like this, but now it's also spinning like this. <laughs> so what's going on there? Because gravity is trying to pull it down, right? But instead of actually falling down, it's, you know, spinning around in this weird loop. Let me see if I can do that again, but with uh, a little bit more careful startup so that it's uh, not so wobbly. No, it's kind of it's kind of hard when you're uh, doing it with a piece of string like this. <laughs> All right, that's a bit better. There we go. See, it's spinning around. So the reason this happens is because of the way that angular momentum works. When you have an object that's spinning fairly fast like this, and you try to rotate, and you try to adjust the direction that it's spinning, it actually, instead of going the direction you want it to, it actually moves at a right angle. Right, so imagine this barbecue skewer is the axis of rotation. If I try to, like, if I try to push down on it like this, it'll actually cause it to go like this, which is what's happening with the bike tire, right? I'm pushing down with the force of gravity and the weight of the wheel, and instead of actually going down because of the way angular momentum works, it's going in this, in this plane like this. So 
how do the rollerons work then? Well, the rollerons work because of the way something called the right hand rule works. Where what you have to look at is when the missile is uh, let's say rolling, it's not just it's trying to do two things at once. It's trying to rotate this fin and it's also trying to move it. So you can think of the back of the hinge as sort of dragging the uh, rear of the hinge along with it. And that push it puts a force on it, just like the force of gravity acting on the bike tire. And I, I, I need to, I guess, yeah, just clarify, the roller on is spinning very, very fast. You know, I'm assuming people watched this after seeing his video, but the, you know, the, the, the roller on is spinning very, very, very quickly, you know, about, about its little axis here. And so then when you try to sort of drag it along by when this fin starts to move, you're trying to uh, simultaneously rotate it and you're trying to move it. And so that puts uh, sort of an asymmetric force on it, or it basically puts a torque on this. And because of something called the right hand rule, where the rule is you uh, point your fingers in the, it's called displacement, which in this case is the um, distance between the hinge and the center of the roller on wheel. And then you point your uh, palm in the direction of the force, which is the way that it's trying to drag it. So I guess it'd be that way. And then your thumb points in the direction of the resulting torque. Um, or sorry, actually, it's, it's actually backwards. Uh, it needs to be backwards, though, to, for this to, to work out correctly. Um, Oh wait, no. I was backwards again. It's see see how hard it is to get this right, um, because it's the distance it's the distance between here and here between the hinge and the center. And so the torque you get is up. So say if it's going this if if it's going this way, uh, the force would be no, it would be that way. So anyways, trust me. If you do the right hand rule correctly, it will rotate into the turn, and then you'll get stabilization. But uh, in uh, that, that only stabilizes it in roll because of the way things work. Now, if you're moving it in pitch, uh, then, you know, now it's easier to visualize because, you know, roll is kind of hard to visualize. But now imagine, you know, the missile is moving up and down instead of just straight towards you. Uh, so this is a, you know, a less uh, morbid scenario, I guess. And so now, let's say the missile goes like this. And so if we want to stabilize, again, we need the roller on to lean into the turn and stabilize things. So if it's, going, if it's going this way, we need to lean into the turn and stabilize back that way. So this 90, style of 90 degree hinge works just fine for just stabilizing the roll axis, but in the pitch axis, uh, things are a little bit different because now it does just work the way that Destin was saying, where it's uh, unable to impart a torque on this, and so it will just continue to keep its axis of rotation in the same direction on this hinge, just like a normal guidance gyroscope or something that you use to keep a reference direction. Uh, and it'll lean it'll lean against the turn, uh, right, because it's pointing this way. And so, or, yeah, so sorry, you know, imagine it starts this way, leans this way. This is actually leaning against the turn now. So it'll actually cause it to, you know, because, you know, imagine the airstream coming in on this side, it'll hit this control surface and actually cause it to lean over more. So it's destabilizing, um, but the, Early, and the very earliest versions of the Sidewinder only have these 90 degree hinges, um, and they were kind of unstable in pitch and in yaw. Uh, but that was easier to stabilize with the front control surfaces. So, but they came up with a clever fix, which was to go to something like this hinge that I have cut back here. And so what makes that different is that now, like I said, now it's not, now it's kind of, it's, it's halfway in between, right? So it's a, it's a compromise. So it's, in roll, it does the exact same thing, right? You get, you, you basically, uh, you know, so the, the force now, now in, in both, you know, the displacement and the force are both a little bit different now. Um, but so you still get, but so now you're going to get a torque that goes about the axis of this little hinge here. And you do the right hand rule for, yeah, my goodness. You do the right hand rule for this little 45 degree hinge. And so, oh, I, ha I have a, a, a smaller wheel cut for, for this scenario. 
you get... Ugh. See, roller on spinning real fast at the back. Um, so now you have displacement vector going from here, again, to the center of the roller on, and force vector that is, again, pointing in the direction uh, that you're trying to push this little roller on as the missile, you know, either rolls back and forth, like, you know, which would cause the fin to do this, or pitches where it would cause it to do this, uh, or yaws. And so now, if you just do the right hand rule, you get that it will lean into uh, every axis of turning and stabilize all three of them. So it still does the same thing when it does this, it leans into the turn, it rolls back. But now it also does it with this, where instead of rotating back this way, the way a 90 degree cut would, it leans into the turn the way you need it to, and it stabilizes it. And so, again, if you just do the right hand rule, it works out. But the, the key thing you can see there is that uh, if, you, if, you, if you in pitch and in roll, uh, this thing can't make use of any gyroscopic precession because we can't put any torques on the gyroscope and it'll just stay in position as the missile tries to pitch around it, and that'll actually have the exact opposite of the effect you want to. So somebody in the comments section already gave the correct answer, which is that the 45 degree cuts help stabilize the missile, stabilize the missile in pitch and yaw in addition to roll. And that's why the very earliest versions of the Sidewinder do not have those 45 degree hinges, they have 90 degree hinges. So anyways, I just wanted to explain that real quick, primarily for my own edification. Um, I will perhaps put together some diagrams to explain a uh, more, little bit more rigorously why that's the case, but um, yeah, hope you got uh, a little bit smarter today. I certainly did because it's a useful thing to think about to understand how angular momentum works, and I could sure use the refresher, so thanks Destin. And uh, I don't know, thanks to anybody that is in fact watching. <laughs> Bye.